The London Printer Show with Michelle Carter. Welcome to another episode of the London Preneur Show, where I interview a new entrepreneur every Monday and Friday. Today, I welcome Rob Aiken from Music Central. Welcome, Rob. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for having me. No problem. So off the bat, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Gets me out of the bed. It's it's about uh, improving myself, improving betterment, um, whether it be what can I do to better the company this day? What can I do to improve myself today? What can I be a better dad today? Uh, spiritually, health-wise, uh, just what can I do to move myself forward Very good. in the company? So tell me a bit more about Music Central. When did that start? Music Central officially started professionally in 1983, and so that's uh, 32 years if you're counting. And uh, we primarily do weddings, and we also do corporate events, but our focus is weddings. That's what Mostly we love. Mostly just DJs, or is it just, just creating the music for the wedding? Uh, well... DJs or disc jockeys, mm -hmm. uh, but we also do photo booths and we do karaoke okay. around town through the various bars and uh, uh, we do up lighting, uh, decorative lighting and uh, um, and stuff, just mostly DJs. Yeah, great. And sort of entertainment as a whole for mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So when did you first realize that you wanted to become an entrepreneur? Well, I... Well, Realized you were going to ask me this question, and I thought, well, you never really know you're an entrepreneur until somebody tells you you're an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, it's not like you wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur today. <laughs> you just, uh, you fall into it, and all of a sudden, uh, somebody says, oh, you're an entrepreneur. You go, well, I guess I am. So uh, the question is that you're never really an entrepreneur until you're labeled an entrepreneur. And sometimes it's not, it's, it could be derogative because mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are kind of, they're, they're a breed upon amongst themselves. So I know amongst my friends, I'm the only one that's kind of in that vein. And most of them have, you know, nine to five jobs and, you know, good, good paying. Do you ever wish you had had a nine to five normal job? No. No? That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, but that's part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. You, you, you sacrifice things. You, you're, when your friends think, look at you and you say, I worked a, a 90 hour week mm -hmm. and that's the fifth 90 hour week this month, <laughs> uh, they just think you're absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but you wouldn't do it if you weren't an entrepreneur. True, exactly. So what's the f your favorite part about your business? Favorite part is m me physically going out and doing a wedding. Yeah. That's doing, physically doing the show. Yeah. The paperwork is, yeah, I could, <laughs> I could take it or leave it, uh, invoicing, all that kind of stuff. Um, but prepping and actually doing a wedding mm. is is my favorite part, and that's why I'm still out in, in the field doing what I do. Absolutely. Is there anything you struggle with in business? Uh, struggle with the business, I think, is or especially earlier on, was the fact that <clears throat> failure failure is a good thing. Okay. So uh, for an entrepreneur, you've got to understand that it's to be expected. Yeah. Um, so that's a hard adjustment as a person to say i can't get every job i can't every person can't book me or buy my product it's one of those things where you just have to accept that you know that some people are going to pass on you and you just can't take it personally you yeah just have sometimes to say, they're going to say no yeah sometimes <laughs> they're going to say it's just it's a numbers thing and and whether it be a small failure mm -hmm. or a large failure that's just part of the gig yeah Absolutely. Failure comes along with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's part, actually, an entrepreneur, that's that's part and parcel. Yeah. And I think if you unlayer the onion of an entrepreneur, yeah. you'll see some failures. Yeah, exactly. Within the within what they've done. I mean, it could be a huge success at this point, mm -hmm. but somewhere back in the line, they've failed because they've, and failure is good because you learn from failure. True. Yeah. So what do you think has differentiated you from your competitors? I think that um, primarily uh, it's focus. We know who we are, what we're supposed to be doing. We're primarily wedding DJs, and that's what we specialize in. And that is that's the key. It's just just know who you are, know what you want to do. Become don't, an expert in your field. Yeah, don't stretch yourself too far. Mm -hmm. And uh, and focus. Focus. Very good. Has there been a low moment for you, and how did you get through it? Hmm. Uh, there's been failures in the past, not necessarily in the disc jockey field, but certainly failures as an entrepreneur um, that have you just kind of swallow your pride and go, okay, let's move on, let's get her done and move on to the next thing or just do 
something to adapt and change mm -hmm. so that you the next day is a little bit better. Very good. And you have that power in you to be able to get up and try again. As you get older, uh, I think that's easier when you're in your 20s and your 30s and maybe slightly in your 40s. I think uh, I think that's that's tougher to take that hit and bounce back. Uh, it takes a very strong-willed person. Um, mm -hmm. But as you get wiser and mm -hmm. you get in into your mid 40s and, and late 40s, I think it just it's just a natural development of who you are and, and the wisdom of yeah, it is what it is. Okay, interesting. So, what's your vision for your business? Where do you want to see it in the next five years? Five years, uh, ex expanding a little bit, but we're never we've never been a company that does things really quickly or grow in a in a burst. It's more of a slow and steady wins the race very good so that's always been our philosophy and that's what we continue to be so we'll we will continue to grow and continue to do what we do and continue to do it very very well mm -hmm. and that will has and will continue to less and you mentioned earlier that you have you employ 30 people now approximately uh not necessarily but we uh we employ about 20 people mm -hmm. Yeah, we just had our uh, we had our event. We had our party last night for the staff, the team appreciation night, and with all the spouses and everything, there was about 30, 35 people there. Okay, so do you see that team getting bigger over the next couple of years, or just keeping... naturally it will get busy? Yeah, it, there's there's an involvement. Some some people fall out because they didn't you know they don't want to spend weekends DJing and they want to do their own thing, um, but. So you bring on new people. Mm -hmm. You always bring on new people. But we have a super loyal crew, and I uh, couldn't be prouder of them. I'm going to go off script here a little mm. bit, if you don't mind. I want to hear a little bit more about your hiring and firing process, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Um, God forbid I fire anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but for hiring, it's a lot of word of mouth. I never, for one of the lessons I've learned is you don't hire somebody. Mm -hmm. You you envelop them, you, in, you incorporate them within the company, within the team, within the family, but you don't hire them because if you hire somebody, they're looking for a job. Okay. And not, what we do is not a job, yeah. right? It's not about the, you know, it's got to be a passion. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for is somebody that has a passion, who loves music, who loves uh, pleasing people mm -hmm. and being good in front of people. And if I find that, find that gem, find that sparkle in somebody, then I'll, I'm all about them. And then you can train the skills then as they go along. Yes. That's yes, but I'm, I'm, I never, never will look for somebody looking for a job and looking for money. Mm. If I'm, if I see that in somebody, uh, I'm, that's that's not my angle. Wow. I'll push them away. Uh, like firing, uh, it happens sometimes. They, you know, it, it, they just do something that is not acceptable, mm -hmm. and normally they just go, "Yeah, I appreciate this. I screwed up." And it's never really, it's never an issue. Yeah. Uh, they just realize it is what it is. And uh, so their mistakes you have, to, you have to, to let me go, right? And, yeah. I can, and they respect my opinion. So there's never been any uh, craziness or shouting matches or anything within Music Central. Thank goodness. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. If you could describe your ideal customer, who would that be? The ideal customer is somebody, uh, primarily a couple, like a wedding couple, uh, bride and groom, that really appreciates what we do. Mm -hmm. That there's a skill level that we bring to the table that is essential to making their night amazing. Mm -hmm. um, which is harder, a little bit harder to find these days because music is a little bit underappreciated and what the skill level that we bring to the table is underappreciated. But if I find a couple that can really appreciate the magic that we can bring to their night yeah well they're keepers very good can you describe a little bit more about how that magic is different with your service compared to someone else's uh, well it's professionalism with a personal touch is one of our little I ideals uh, mantras but the other I mantra that we kind of uh, definitely empl em employ mm -hmm. is the fact that we call it your day your way which simply means this is your day you know why should we force our template yeah. Our our way of doing things onto you. We want to listen to what your ideas are, who you are musically, what your thoughts are, mm -hmm. uh, and what your vibe is for the evening. And we want to translate that and execute that into the evening. So I have a list of songs that I might want to have played only because they're my liking. Mm. Is that something I can just pass to you? Or do you like to sort of incorporate what you know has been successful already? Well, certainly there, 
they're hiring us because we know what we're doing mm -hmm. and we can make an evening flow and put the pieces of the puzzle together but uh, at the same token it's a journey between we're teammates so the bride the groom myself uh, and the DJ are all a team making this happen so there's a, there's a constant communication we have a we have one major meeting that's called the consultation and that kind of gets us through and starts the process of, of okay what are you musically into sets their template sets their blueprint mm -hmm. out for us to read throughout the evening. Okay, so we've had this consultation and it's become the day of the event and we put on the music that we think would be like, but nobody's mm. dancing. Mm. What happens then? Sure, so and this this is always, there's always a dialogue that what if, right? Yeah. We, okay, and make sure that they understand, okay, we, we need a little wiggle room here. Mm -hmm. So if we're thinking, okay, we've created this template, we think we know what your crowd is, we know who you are musically, we know who the groom is musically, the moms and dads, um, the friends, we kind of have a general sense, yeah. but then they, they completely go right off course. Yeah. <laughs> and I always say, uh, the crowd cannot lead the DJ, the DJ, the, so the crowd does have to lead the DJ, right? Okay. The DJ doesn't lead the crowd. So if the crowd's going this way, then the DJ has to follow musically okay. and, and make sure that he's in step with his dance floor. Yeah, and with his years, audience. your years of experience can actually get in there and mm -hmm. direct and we, the crowd like yeah, that. Yeah, and we're very unique. We do a lot of training. We train almost on a monthly basis with all the team. Mm -hmm. So it's, and there's a dialogue within the team of trying to get better all the time. So everybody's in step with making sure that we're always giving that extra 110%. Very good. So where can others find out more information about you? Uh, so we have several different areas that you can find us. Uh, phone number is 519-680-0698. Uh, website's musiccentral.ca. Um, and then we're also on Twitter at musiccentral83. But uh, we also have an office, which is uh, just down on Dundas Street at first. Dundas and first. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. You're very welcome. I want to thank you so much for watching. Just before I let you go, I want to thank you to Pink Ink, our new stylist, for providing the wardrobe, makeup, and the overall style for the show today. Also, a thank you to Susan Dinner, who has created these beautiful jewelry that we have on the show as well. Also, one last shout out to Sonia at the salon, who was kind enough to be able to do my hair. Thank you again for watching. I hope you like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.